assalamu alaikum i uh, welcome to all of you in this first recorded lecture for the week number 10 and the topics we will discuss in this lecture or in this week are mud logging coring and nmr log the first topic is obviously the mud logging and we know that when we drill uh, the well bore we use mud and there are different purposes of uh, mud the first is that it provides an overbalance condition and control the formation pressure and uh, by doing that uh, the, the kick and blowout is prevented the second use of uh, using mud is that it cools the drilling bit and the other use basically it cleans the well bore by bringing the drill cuttings to surface so basically when mud is being circulated it is bringing the drill cuttings to surface with any hydrocarbons in it so by examining the return of the mud with the cuttings we can measure the lithology of the of the formation that has just been drilled and if any hydrocarbon is present in that lithology it can also be uh, identified at surface so this is called mud logging the record of the mud that is being uh, uh, circulated in the well bore and as mentioned over here that mud logging is the geologist record of the drilling of the well and before wire line logging was invented it was the only record that existed and uh, through mud logging basically we uh, identify the lithology that of the rock that has been drilled uh, by the drilling activities so lithology is based on the examinations of the cuttings and the cuttings are brought to surface by the drilling mud and uh, at surface we know that mud passes through various mud cleaning equipment and the first one is the shale shaker the shale shaker basically separates the largest cutting from the mud and this is the location the shale shaker is the location from where uh, the cuttings are collected for analyzing so geologist or the mud logging crew collects the largest cutting from the shale shaker and analyze its lithology and obviously the porosity permeability any hydrocarbon present in that cutting and the cuttings are collected from the shale shaker depending upon the drilling rate and uh, the cuttings are collected maybe around like after 2 mm 2 meter of drilling or maybe up to like 20 meter of uh, drilling so in uh, shallow well bore when the drilling rate is high uh, the cuttings are collected uh, after like 20 meter of drilling and in deep wells when the drilling rate is is very low because of the pressure and because of the compaction and because of other hardness of the formation so in deep wells the cuttings are collected after like 2 meter of drilling so we do have information of the lithology of of the rock after 2 meters and that is basically called the mud logging so in mud logging basically we do have the physical cuttings so uh, by examining that we are identifying its lithology and any fluid present in that the only problem uh, with analyzing the cutting is that when the cuttings are moved from the bottom to surface they basically get mixed with the previous cuttings and at surface you may have uh, received two or more cuttings from a given depth so cuttings get mixed and it is difficult to identify that Uh, uh from which depth uh which of the cuttings are coming so cuttings are examined and reported in percentage for example at around like 2000 meter you will say that at surface we get 70% sandstone and 30% shale it is likely possible that uh, this 30% shale was from the previous drill lithology which has come with sandstone because of the gravity segregation because of the irregularity of the well bore so all cuttings basically uh, get mixed and you report the examining examine lithology with the percentage we will discuss it in in the coming slides too so new samples are taken depending upon the rate of drilling so if the drilling is fast 
you collect sample after 20 meters of drilling the drilling rate is is low you collect samples after 2 meter of drilling this is the mud circulation system and we know that mud is pumped through the mud pump and uh, mud is stored in mud tanks so the fresh mud or the new mud is stored in the mud tank from where it is pumped into the drilling string through the mud pumps and it passes through the rotary hose into soil well into the kelly into the drilling string and basically it comes out from the nozzles of the drilling bit and basically mud the purpose of the mud is also to apply some pressure jetting action and this jetting action basically helps in drilling so because of the jetting action of the of the mud through this nozzle of the drilling bit you soften the formation and it is easy to drill a given lithology so when mud comes out of the nozzle of the drilling bit it moves into the annulus between the drilling string and the well bore and carries the cuttings with itself to the surface and at surface as you can see the mud passes through the mud cleaning equipment so the fresh mud after interacting with the uh, lithology with the formation and with the cuttings has become dirty and has to be processed first before it can return back to the drilling string again so mud cleaning equipments are present at surface which basically clean the mud that has returned from the from the well bore so the mud first passes through the shale shaker where the largest cuttings are removed and basically the mud logging crew takes cuttings from the shale shaker and examine its lithology porosity permeability and other things and obviously from the uh, shale shaker mud passes through the descent the sander desilter and maybe some other equipments and then the fresh mud is basically stored in the uh, mud tanks maybe some chemicals are further added into the storage tank to bring or restore the original properties of the mud that are required for the mud to uh, pump inside the well bore so this is the mud circulation unit and the mud that is returning to the surface along with the along with the cuttings and with change properties are examined through mud logging so this is the record of the mud and that is why it is called a uh, mud logging because you are recording the properties of the mud that has returned to surface along with the cuttings so mud pumped by the mud pump via the drilling string into the bottom of the hole at high pressure and this pressure turn the mud fluid back through the annular into the shale shaker with drill cuttings the basic mud logging service involves extraction and analysis of the gases and cuttings from the returning mud system so the basic purpose is is to analyze the cuttings that are coming with the with the mud and any gases that are basically coming to surface with the mud we will see that we have uh, we have the gas extractor at surface before the shale shaker which takes out any gas that is coming with the returning mud and the composition of the, the of the gas is measured and reported that, that whether the gas is hydrocarbon or non hydrocarbon so the basic mud logging service involves measuring the gas and the cutting but in modern mud logging unit they also measure the rick side activities so drilling parameters such as hook load such as rate of penetration such as uh, volume of the mud that is pumped in and the volume of mud that is coming out are also measured along with other various parameters we will see in the coming slide so basically mud logging uh, made not only measures the mud properties of the returning mud but also measures the drilling parameters so the objectives of mud logging have changed the uh, one of the objective is to identify the potentially productive hydrocarbon bearing formations identify the correlatable geological formations and provide 
data to the driller that enable safe and economically optimized operations so these are the objectives of a mud logging unit apart from only logging the mud this is the mud log of a given well again this mud log has been measured when the drilling was uh, going on so while drilling this mud log has been made and as you can see the cuttings have been reported in terms of percentages across different depths so for example at around 2400 meter you got 80% shale with 20% uh, some carbonate similarly at around this depth you have like 50% shale with some uh, sandstone similarly at different depth you can see the cuttings are reported as a percentage percentage of two different lithologies the description is also mentioned over here that this lithology is mostly shaley this lithology is mostly sandstone this lithology is mostly siltstone and percentage of the cut, uh, the lithology has been reported in this cutting section and basically this is possible only when the cuttings are coming to the surface with other cuttings because of the irregularity of the well bore because of the fallout of the previous cuttings the cuttings get mixed and at surface you generally get two cuttings at a given depth along with cuttings and its description the drilling rate is is mentioned as you can see you have a drilling rate around 30 minutes per meter and it may increase to some higher values or decrease uh, to some lower values so drilling rate basically is also mentioned and uh, along with it the total gas that has uh, been measured at a particular depth is also reported and this gas has been measured from the drilling mud after recovering the gas from the drilling mud calcimetry mud bit casing and the properties are also reported in a given mud log so these are the objectives of mud logging you collect drilling cuttings you describe the cuttings type of minerals present estimate properties such as porosity and permeability of the drill formation through the cuttings maintain and monitor uh, drilling related and safety related sensing equipment estimate the pore pressure of the drill formation collect monitor and evaluate hydrocarbons released from the drill formation assess the producibility of the hydrocarbon bearing formation and maintain a record of the drilling parameters so cuttings are analyzed apart from the cuttings the drilling related and the safety related uh, sensing is done and obviously it is measured continuously it is monitored continuously and report any abnormalities to the drillers and the company man immediately and obviously they made a record of uh, hydrocarbon released from the drill formation so from the gas analysis they measure what kinds of hydrocarbons have been released when the when the formation was drilled and if you have the oil they examine the cuttings to identify any oil in the in the cuttings in that way they basically assess the producibility of the hydrocarbon bearing formation similarly through the drilling rate they examine whether you have drilled a porous formation or a tight formation so if drilling rate increases sharply that indicates that this is the porous formation and if the drilling rate is very slow that indicates that this is the tight formation or low porous formation so through drilling activities they also measure about the formation that has been drilled the real time parameters being measured by the mud logging unit so these are the parameters that are measured by the mud logging unit obviously through sensors so block height 
the travel block height, the hook load, the stand pipe pressure, the casing pressure, rotary torque, pit volume, rotary table speed and the pump stroke speed, mud temperature in and out, mud weight in and out, mud salinity in and out, mud flow in and out, S2S sensor, total bit revolutions. So by measuring all these uh, parameters of the drilling and uh, safe drilling is ensured. For example, if somehow uh, the pit volume has increased, so that will indicate that you uh, have large returns of the mud from the from the well bore. So that is an alarming situation. So uh, immediate actions are required to make sure that uh, the pit volume does not increase sharply. Similarly, if pit volume decreases sharply, that indicates that you have a loss circulation zone. So again, the efforts are required to reduce the loss circulation in a given zone. Similarly, you measure the total bit revolution and rotary torque. And again, this basically links to your weight on bit to ensure the optimized drilling at a particular formation. So you basically play with rotary torque and total bit revolutions along with weight on bit to ensure that, that uh, you have the optimized drilling at a given depth. Mud weight in and out is basically measured to ensure that you apply a proper weight through the mud to have an overbalanced condition. If mud weight has decreased, that would indicate lighter fluid has entered from the formation into the, into the mud that has reduced its weight of the returning mud. So that's how basically you ensure the safe drilling activities. So that's how basically the cuttings look like uh, when they are arrived at surface. So they are collected from shale shaker and brought to the mud logging unit for examination. Many times the cuttings are crushed and placed in a microscope to identify the color, the texture, the uh, shape of the grain and the sorting of the of the rock and other pro uh, properties are measured. Along with it, the presence of hydrocarbon is detected through application of, uh, of the ultraviolet light and through the fluorescence, they basically check whether you have oil or not. And if oil is present, which type of oil is present? So some oil basically glow or fluorescence with a very high or dark color and some oil basically uh, have fluorescence of a very light color. So based on the fluorescence, they basically guess whether you have a very high API gravity oil or the low API gravity oil. We will see in the coming slides. So basically, as you can see, they label each cuttings with the depth that, uh, for example, from which depth these cuttings have been arrived at surface. Uh, they also report the time of the cuttings collection, when the cuttings were collected and from which depth these cuttings have been collected. Again, the cuttings will get mixed as they move from the bottom to surface because of the gravity effect, because of the irregular shape of the well bore. So you will not get a single lithology at surface. As you can see, you have a mixed lithology uh, when the cuttings have been arrived at surface. Uh, it is likely possibility that some lithologies will get mixed with, with the mud, for example, the salt formation. So that is why basically you are measuring the mud salinity of the mud return. So because of the fact that salt will not come at surface as, a, as other lithologies, like other cuttings, it will get dissolved in the mud. So that is why you are also measuring the mud weight of the returning mud. So cuttings are arrived at surface, they are taken from the shale shaker and they are brought to the mud logging unit for examination and at the mud logging unit, the crew uh, examine the cuttings through microscope, they examine the cuttings through the uh, ultraviolet uh, light and uh, description is written over here that inside the logging unit, the mud logger rinses and dries cutting sample before examining them, the mud logger Describe each sample in terms of mythology, color, grain size, shape, sorting, porosity, texture and other characteristics relevant to rock type 
and because of the presence of hydrocarbons may not be obvious even under a microscope each sample is examined for fluorescence under ultraviolet light and many special tests are run on the rock sample to make on the spot determination of specific mineral these tests may vary from such standard chemicals as algerin red for calcite detection to calcimetry for quantitative determination of carbonate content uh, you want to confirm whether you have limestone or dolomite many times you add a chemical that is uh, known as algerin red and when you add this chemical and if uh, calcite is present the mineral will become red and if dolomite is present uh, it will not change its color so different tests are run to identify whether you have the carbonates or not or maybe you have limestone or dolomite so to differentiate between mineralogy you run different type of test many times you add hcl on your mineral because when you add hcl and if you have carbonates uh, the hcl will react aggressively with carbonates and you will see effervenes and uh, because of the strong reaction you will identify that you have uh, carbonates or not the sample is viewed under ultraviolet light and any fluorescence noted and it is likely possible that certain type of hydrocarbon which are very heavy they stick to the green surface and they still not fluorescence so in order to have or in order to identify such hydrocarbons we use take of the organic solvent and basically the rock sample is treated with an organic solvent while being viewed under ultraviolet light streaming fluorescence may be noted as it moves from the rock cuttings into the solvent surrounding the cutting and uh, as mentioned that fluorescence can be an extremely sensitive indicator of the presence of hydrocarbons in drill cuttings and sample fluorescence is evaluated in terms of color as uh, shown in this slide that uh, this is the fluorescences you may get from the cuttings and depending on the color of the fluorescence you will identify what type of oil you have in your cutting so maybe you will have a light oil a condensate so color will be very light ranging from uh, the pinkish to the light blue or maybe green or, or yellow color and if you have very high uh, or a thick oil or heavy oil your color will be very dark the dark brown the dark green the dark yellow or the brownish color so from the fluorescence of the cuttings you will identify the type of the oil you have in the formation and uh, again as mentioned over here that you also take use of the organic solvent to identify the type of fluid you have in the cuttings and obviously this is done when you have a very thick oil uh, in your formation so fluorescence color may indicate oil gravity dark colors are suggestive of the low api gravity heavy oils and light colors indicate high api gravity light oils and following application of a solvent on the samples hydrocarbon fluorescence will appear to flow and diffuse into the solvent as the oil dissolve so cuttings basically are examined for the for lithology for the uh, grain size shape color sorting porosity texture and uh, samples are also basically exposed to ultraviolet lights to identify any presence of oil to measure the gas the mud logger relies on an automated gas detection system suction lines transport a constant stream of air and gas from the gas trap located at the shale shaker to the logging unit there sensitive instruments process the gas sample extracted from the drilling mud the primary gas measurement tool is the flame ionization detector which can sense hydrocarbon gas concentration as low as 5 parts per million for more detailed hydrocarbon analysis during shows the mud logger employs a gas chromatograph the chromatograph separates the gas stream into the fraction according to the molecular weight commonly detected components fall within the alkane group like methane ethane etc so this is the uh, basically diagram shows that how gas is collected when you have the mud return so just before shale shaker you have this gas trap 
as you can see the drilling fluid is flowing or returning uh, from the well bore into the surface and when this is passing through this trap the gas is sucked inside this trap so gas sampling is tra traditionally done with a mechanical degasser generically a called a gas trap typically placed in the shaker box the trap pulls in drilling mud through the centrifugal action of the stirrer the mechanical action of the stirrer combined with a slight vacuum pulled in the the trap head space allows the mud to partition between the liquid and the gas phase so when the mud is taken inside this gas trap the mud is dissociating into the liquid and gas part the liquid part is again basically sent to this drilling fluid flow line and the gas part is sent uh, to the logging unit for its analysis so basically we cannot uh, uh, identify gas just like the oil the gas is basically continuously measured and it is basically continuously collected automatically uh, in this gas trap which is near to your shale shaker and basically its composition is continuously being measured uh, by the mud logging unit and if you have h2s or some hazardous gas coming uh, from the well bore uh, the information is immediately communicated to the driller and the company man and necessary action is immediately taken so this is very important for the safety of the drilling rig and the drilling personnel present on the drilling rig so the samples uh, are described to observe lithology hydrocarbon shows porosity and other geological properties so this is the mud logging one thing should be known before uh, the mud logging is the lag time uh, for example if we are collecting uh, the uh, cuttings at surface right now these are the cuttings of the formation that has been drilled some time earlier similarly the formation that is being drilled right now its cutting will come to the surface after some time so this delay in the time the time of drilling and the time of uh, reaching that cuttings to the surface is called the lag time the time it takes a sample to reach the surface after being drilled is called the lag time and it should be calculated or must be calculated to link the lithology of the cuttings to the accurate depth so as mentioned over here that a sample drilled at uh, 3000 meter uh, which is being drilled right now will take around like 1 hour and 10 minutes to reach to the surface so the cuttings of this formation will come after 70 minutes to surface and obviously it depends on the mud circulation rate and we will see in the coming slide how this lag time is calculated so we must know that these cuttings will come to the surface after like 70 minutes so we basically link the cuttings that will we will collect after 70 minutes to this depth because it is very important to link the lithology with accurate depth and basically once we have linked uh, the lithology examined through the sample with the accurate depth then we can only use the mud logging uh, with the violin log basically we have seen that in violin log we do not have any physical lithology at surface we are basically guessing the lithology through the geophysical operations through gamma ray log and other logs we identify lithology we compare the well logs with the mud logs so if the interpretation of the well logs matches the uh, example examined in the mud logs then only our well logging interpretation is accurate so for that the lag time should be known to us so that we can accurately link our sample to exact depth so from exact depth we will have the mud logs we also have the violin logs we have the interpretation from the violin logs or the well logs and then we will compare our interpretation with the mud logs and if the interpretation is accurate then we can only use Uh, our well logs for the lithology and hydrocarbon detection because the estimates from the mud logs are only estimates uh, the porosity and permeability and other things are only estimates the exact uh, numbers would come from the well logs 
and it is only possible after uh, the accurate linkage of the samples with the accurate depth so lag defined as the time it takes to travel inside the hole between two specified uh, depth points the time taking between the surface to the bottom of the hole is called lag down or lag in and the time taking between the bottom of the hole to the surface is called lag up or bottom ups so lag time must be known and it is basically calculated through these equations and first you calculate the annular volume and annular volume is calculated by subtracting the id this is the id of the well bore the inner diameter of the well bore minus the outer diameter of the drilling string and by basically subtracting these two diameters one is the inner diameter of the well bore and one is the outer diameter of the drilling string you basically measuring the annulus between uh, the two so for example in this case this is your drilling string and this is your well bore so the, the inner diameter of the well bore and outer diameter of the drilling string should be known to calculate the volume uh, between the two the, the the volume between the annulus and you have to multiply it uh, by l so area has to be multiplied by the l which is uh, the height of the well bore to get the volume so first you calculate the annular volume and then you should know the pump output the barrel per stroke again this number is being measured by the mud logging unit that how much barrel is being pumped inside the well bore per stroke of the pump so this number is being measured and this number has been calculated by the uh, by the formula so when you divide the two you get the lag in stroke and when you divide the lag in stroke with the pump rate stroke per minute again this number is being measured by the mud logging unit so when you divide the two uh number the lag in stroke with the pump rate which is stroke per minute you will get the time lag in minutes so this number calculation is very important to basically link the cuttings to the accurate depth because the cutting that is now being sampled at surface over from the formation that has been drilled some time earlier and the formation that is being drilled right now its cutting will come to surface after some time so this is the delay in the time and that is called the time lag a mud log presentation a mud log should contain the following track the rop weight on bit track the depth track cutting lithology track gas track and the chromatography track this is the mud log uh, from a given well and as you can see you have the rate of penetration in meter per hour in one of the track along with it Uh, the mud properties are mentioned. For example, mud weight, funnel viscosity, plastic viscosity, yield point, and pH are mentioned. And weight on weight, the RPM, stroke per minute, torque, and the pump output is also mentioned. Once you uh, in one track you have the interpreted lithology, and one track you have the cutting lithology. And as mentioned over here, that uh, across each step you have two lithologies uh, when they were collected at surface. So lithologies. has been reported in the percentage of two lithologies and from the log header you can you can check which two lithologies have been mentioned at a given depth so at this depth a sample was collected and sample was comprised of 80% for example uh, clay stone and 20% sandstone and for example at this depth when the sample was collected at surface you had uh, uh, 10% clay stone and 90% sandstone so from the cutting lithology percentage one can interpret it the most likely lithology so basically interpreted lithology is also mentioned over here that you have a very thin thin section of sandstone followed by a thick section of shale and then some other formations which you can see from the log header and again this become a uh, basically a starting point for the well logging so when you do the well logging you also interpreted lithologies and then you compare your interpreted lithologies with the mud logs and when both results are uh, are equal or comparable then you can trust the interpretation of well logging and along with uh, the lithologies and rate of penetration the gas chromatography is also uh, reported on the mud log so percentage of uh, 
C1, C3, C4, H2S, C6 and other gases are reported on the mud logging unit along with the total gas. So through the mud logs you can uh, you can guess about the lithology at a given depth and that becomes a starting point for the interpretation of uh, of well logs and this mud log is generally always available for the well logging unit. Health, safety, environmental consideration is one of the basic job of the mud logging unit. Various parameters measured for formation evaluation and to monitor during operations and equipment are also indicators of the condition that could pose health, safety and environmental concerns. Poor pressure changes that results in loss of well control pose obvious safety concerns. Any loss of control that results in a hydrocarbon release also poses serious environmental issues. Ambient monitoring for natural gas is done for health and fire safety. Monitoring H2S is essential in areas in which the potential has been shown historically to exist, as well in, in the rank wildcat wells in which the characteristics of the geological basin are poorly known. So HSC consideration is also an important task of the mud logging unit. So they keep an eye on the cross circulation zone, they keep an eye on the kick and blow out, they keep an eye on the S2S concentration uh, that is basically returning with your mud and early identification and communication is, is required to prevent any accident. So that's all from my side for, for the mud logging and we have seen that mud logging basically is very important because it not only log the mud but also major very various important drilling parameters that ensure HSC while drilling. And uh, again, this mud logging basically is the first point for the well logging because when we uh, do interpretation on well logs, we compare our results with the mud logs. When results are uh, matchable, then we can trust the interpretation of well logging. So let's uh, move to another topic which is scoring and again scoring is is another formation evolution technique and uh, basically along with well log data, well test data, geological and seismic data, the core data also provides valuable information to the petroleum engineers and sometime the core data is also very important to trust the well log data. So whenever core data is available, it should be linked to the well log data and basically when it is linked, the trust on well log interpretation is increased. There are two types of uh, coring, one is called the conventional coring, another is called the uh, sidewall coring. So in conventional corings, we basically collect the core during drilling by replacing the drill bit with a diamond core bit and a core barrel. This is basically a hollow bit which basically which cuts the formation and uh, holds the cores inside uh, this this the barrel which is attached to this coring bit and this type of basically cores are collected uh, this uh, through this uh, coring bit so continuous mechanical coring is a costly procedure and uh, because uh, for this conventional coring we have to uh, pull out the drilling string from the hole to replace the normal bit by coring bit and core barrel. Multiple trips out of the well bore are required to drill enough samples and the coring operation is slow. So because of these reasons, the uh, basically conventional coring is expensive and is generally seldom done to collect the cores. So if uh, economics justify the cores should be collected because it provides the valuable information because in this coring you have the physical samples from the formation the, sim uh, the large uh, samples from the formation and uh, obviously these will provide the, uh, the lithology, the prosody, permeability, saturation in more uh, detail as compared to mud logging and the well logging and obviously when this information is available we can uh, compare the results of the coring with uh, the well logging to to enhance our trust on the calculations made through the well logging. 
So obtaining high quality core data depends on the successful completion of many steps in the drilling, handling, preservation, transportation, sampling and measurements of the core. And uh, obviously this cores has to be sampled uh, first and then it has to be transported uh, to the lab where the analysis are made. So during this process you have to preserve the original conditions of the core. So preservation means that the original fluid should remain in the core and the pressure of the core uh, during the sampling should not decrease so that if any gas is present or any oil is present should remain inside the core. So handling should be done with care and to make sure that when the sample are sent to the core the original conditions are present inside the sample. For that purpose the inner core barrels are either frozen or epoxy stabilized on the rig then cut into 1 meter sections. The ends are capped and tapped. Sections are packed horizontally to prevent gravity drainage of core fluids. So basically in this way the original conditions are maintained. So any hydrocarbons present in this core should not be allowed to vaporize when the cores are brought to surface after sampling. So this is very important. The handling, preservation, transportation is very important for the accurate measurement from the core. And uh, coring is a detailed program especially in a production wells. In an exploration well the coring cannot always be accurately planned due to the lack of knowledge about the rock. If there is a need for sample in an already drilled interval then sidewall coring can be applied. So for example if you hadn't planned any uh, conventional coring because it is expensive and required an accurate and detailed plan earlier and it is basically time consuming but after analyzing uh, the well logs you identify that some zones are productive or can be productive because through well logs you have identified that these zones contain hydrocarbons they are permeable and they are very porous so when through the well logs you identify some potential productive zone then in those zones you can plan sidewall coring and obviously the name suggests that in sidewall coring we collect cores from the sides of the borehole wall and this sidewall coring will be discussed in the next lecture. Thank you.